of Freaks. It's Wednesday, May 8th, 2024. Coming up on the program today, Daniel Larson has been busted by the feds. I wonder why. Bomb you! Bomb you! Plus, our favorite weatherman, Frankie McDonald, reveals he's a chubby chaser. A fat ass tries to cancel her gym membership. And a quadriplegic attacks a cop. Oh, how cute! Oh, damn, that's a giant fat fucking dome, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, you wanna work with some big penis, man? Oh, fuck yeah, buddy. Oh, just feel yeah, Fuck yeah. Alright, now it's pretty common knowledge that I love... Big penis, buddy. Giant fucking penis. Very proud of that cop. Penis. I beat my day, fuck the penis. Penis. I beat my day, fuck the penis. Penis. I beat my day, fuck the penis. Feel fucking fantastic. The Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. I want to come while I eat your smelly, hairy, wet pussy. Please, no confessions involving children. Why don't you go talk about Jewish space lasers and really, why don't you fuck off? How about that? It's amazing. Yes, Tim Henson back here with you for the Wednesday episode of DV. Have a great one for you. Uh, at the top of the show, I would like to take just a second and wish someone very special a happy birthday. Longtime listeners of the show would have heard this man on occasion helping me out because he was my old roommate. We lived together multiple times throughout the 2000s and even 2010s. One of my oldest and dearest, I would venture to say best friend. It's between him and my favorite Starbucks barista. Joe's been there for me longer, but on the flip side, he has never once upgraded my grande macchiato to a venti for free. Advantage Barista. I mean, Joe's still my best friend, but he's like my super secret best friend. I can't admit to it. Got to keep getting those perks, you know? Anyway, yes, uh, today is a very special day. It is Joey's birthday. Yeah, he's turning the big 6-0 this year. Oh, my God, what a milestone, right? Which, by the way, won't be the only stone he's dealing with. Milestones, kidney stones, gallstones. Maybe tonsil stones, but ew. This is what happens when you become a near dead. Also, how's that prostate holding up? Is it getting all puffy and enlarged? Having trouble pissing? <laughs> These are all problems I don't have to deal with because I'm just so fucking youthful. I've got time on my hands, motherfucker. You're knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Okay, in reality, we're the same fucking age. I mean, he was born in May and I was born in August, which technically makes me uh, younger. I win. Just to level that playing field, though, uh, Joe doesn't have a heart condition like me, so we'll just call it a tie. In reality, you know, there probably wouldn't be a distorted view without uh, Joe. He started it uh, with me. In my uh, tiny little bedroom back in Ashtabula, just dicking around. We entertained ourselves mostly. But if he would have turned to me and just been like, hey, you know, um, this isn't good. This isn't funny. We should stop. This, you, you know, your skills lie in other areas, Tim. You should just not be behind a microphone. I probably would have just stopped. Plus, you know, when we had the opportunity to go to, uh, to Texas to do the show for that failed abortion of a internet service called Real Talk... I, I doubt I would go by myself. I was young. It was uh, shortly after, I think, uh, the freshman year of college. I don't, I don't think I'd have the balls to do it on my own. But, you know, with Joey there, of course, it was quite the adventure we got to experience together. And some very important lessons were learned, such as don't trust people, always get shit in writing, and get paid up front. So many lessons were learned that summer. The great thing about being roommates is even after, you know, I started doing DV on my own and doing little video things and all, you know, all sorts of dumb shit, uh, I would, I could just pull Joe into it. Like he'd walk through the door right after coming home from work and I'd be like, okay, I need you to dress up like a woman and hold a baby doll covered in blood. And I want you to cry pretending it's an aborted fetus. I'm doing a commercial for a baby meat deli. It's a deli that sells aborted fetus. I mean, come on. And he'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. Let me go get my wigs. Dark hair or light hair? 
Do you want it long or short? Like, no questions asked, really. Makes perfect sense. All right, I need you to be an ex-Heaven's Gate cult member and a Scientologist and a Branch Davidian. Or I just, like, stick a microphone in his face. I'm like, okay, I'm doing a cartoon, and you're a porn director named Coco LaRue. You're shooting an anal scene, and Courtney Love's going to interrupt and throw up all over the place. And he's like, well, okay, sure, whatever. Best of all, I didn't have to pay him a cent. Free labor. Oh, I miss those days. You know, I don't have a lot of audio from the early days of DV, you know, back when I was in high school, 97, 98. I do have just a few tiny clips, and I always love this one. It's only a few seconds long, but it's Joe about to say something insensitive about blind people. And uh, me and another uh, friend who was co-hosting at the time, she was a guest, I guess. We, ju- we immediately apologize for Joe before he says anything. You know what I always wondered? Not to, like, knock blind people. Before Joe Don't says anything. <laughs> We're sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's 17-year-old Tim and Joey. If we only knew back then how offensive this show really was going to become, there's no need to apologize for a, a simple little blind joke. One of the milder things that we have uttered on this show. Anyway, uh, happy birthday, buddy boy. He is, uh, what, 40, uh, whatever we are this year, 44. Hope you have an awesome day, and I can't wait to uh, see you soon. It's been a while. I think it's been over a year since I've seen Joey. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. We've got uh, we've got some real business to tend to here. Richard Simmons, uh, we haven't really heard a lot from him. You know, he's been missing. There's been podcasts devoted to where is Richard Simmons? Is he okay? Is is he being held captive in his house? Are people taking advantage of him or something? Well, we haven't heard a lot from him. Although, you know, every once in a while, he'll issue a press release or statement. Recently, though, he's um, becoming a little more active on social media. Just a day ago on his official YouTube channel, he posted this video. Now, I I should say, you don't actually get to see Richard. Uh, It's just an audio clip, really. Hi, everybody. It's Richard. Happy May 6th, 2024. To me, he does kind of sound like a hostage. You know, like when they hold up newspapers to prove this is a new video. You know, this this wasn't shot a week or a month ago, and they're actually dead. That's, I think, what Richard is trying to accomplish here. Thank you so much for reading my messages. Okay, well, now it's just sort of giving... Hello, my future girlfriend. This is what I sound like. I am 11 years old. This kid truly was ahead of his time. He created a website back in 1998 just because he was a horny little bastard. Desperately looking for pussy. <laughs> you know, he's looking for a girlfriend. Couldn't find one near him, so he uh, decided to cast a wider net. He went worldwide, baby. Honestly, he kind of jumped the gun on this whole project. He was only 11 years old at the time. I don't think he had gone through puberty. Furthermore, as we later found out in a DV update, <laughs> an exclusive, this kid uh, unsurprisingly turned out gay. Hello, my future top daddy. This is what I sound like. And this is what I sound like when you choke me with that fat cock. Quackle, quackle, quackle. That's what his that's what his profile audio sounds like today. If you visit his website. Please pee on me. Pee on you? You were a little freak even back then. No, he's saying PM as in private message. The precursor to today's DMs. Anyway, it was that part that reminded me of uh, Richard Simmons. Please PM me if I'm on Yahoo Chat. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for reading my messages. Richard, do you want someone to pee on you? Maybe the future girlfriend guy will do it for you now that he's, you know, most definitely over the age of 18. He's an adult and very gay. His name is Mike Blount. Mike, do you have anything you would like to say? Hello, my future boyfriend. This is me, 22. Still live in New Mexico. Twenty. He was 22 14 years ago, so, you know. I'm online a lot, so you should not AM me. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. These days, uh, Mike is laying low on the internet. I can confirm as of uh, 2023, he was still alive, though. That's the last post I saw from him. Getting back to the topic at hand here, Richard Simmons. 
The reason, of course, I uh, bring him up is he just posted a new video to his YouTube channel. That led me to dig a little deeper. And the shit this man is posting over there is insane. Back in April, Richard posted uh, this song. I guess he recorded this years prior, but uh, I had never heard Bow Wow before. Oh, no, a built-in anarchy, archy, arch. For elephants, dogs that go bark, bark, bark. Sit, roll over, our hearts they seize. Our pets just do it with such sweeties. Yes, this song is in Ode to Dogs. Why did Richard Simmons want to record a song all about dogs? Uh, I have no fucking clue. Pit bulls and beagles make us giggle. Dalmatians and bugs, we love to hug. Buy them fancy collars to bows in their hair. We feed them healthy snacks as they sit on the dairy air. I, I love animals. It's important to know that this was not a children's song. At least, you know, Richard didn't record this for kids. He recorded this because he says he loves animals. Actually, in the description uh, on this YouTube video, he says, I love, love, love animals. I, I love animals in a way. See, now that concerns me because, you know, to me, you can love an animal in a normal way or you can love an animal in a special way. The Jonathan Nyehouse kind of way. Well, my beautiful doggy, what do you want to do now? Oh, I know. How about a game of anal sex? Anal sex is not a game. It is serious business. If you're not careful, someone or something will get hurt. Once again, uh, trying to get back on track here, talking about Richard Simmons. What is this guy's game plan? He disappears out of the public eye, right? Then doesn't say a word for years. No one hears from Richard Simmons. Then all of a sudden, like two months ago, his YouTube channel springs to life. You know, previously, the last video he uploaded was 10 years ago. Now, it's true. Like a lot of the stuff he's posting now is just like old you know, songs and stuff he has previously recorded. But still, there seems to be a movement. Something's uh, is a brewing in the uh, Richard Simmons camp. Is he getting ready to come out of hibernation? Ready to fall in love for the first time. I'm ready to fall in love. If not now, then when? I mean, Richard Simmons is like 80 years old, right? Love for the first time. Maybe this is why he's coming out of retirement. He's ready to fall in love. Or maybe he's found love. I'm ready. My future girlfriend. Hello, hello, hello. Please PM me. Please, please PM me. Hello, PM me. My future girlfriend. Okay. You know, Richard Simmons has done a lot of good over the years with fat people, getting them to lose weight and stuff, but someone, someone needs to tell him that, uh, Singing is really not one of his talents. You know, in addition to Richard Simmons, we haven't heard a lot from Daniel Larson, one of our favorite lol cows. And um, now we're learning why. Daniel can't talk right now. As a matter of fact, he might not be making a new video for a long, long time. Till the day you fucking die! Bomb you! Bomb you! Bomb you! Bomb you! That's Daniel back in happier times. You'll notice that uh, Daniel seems to like to uh, threaten to bomb people a lot. We've played similar clips in the past. Bomb you! Bomb you! Bomb you! Kill you! Kill you! Kill you! Call the feds on me, you fucking liar! Well, guess what? Someone did. This time is a little different. Now, of course, Daniel has been arrested multiple times, mainly in Colorado. He was arrested in a Walmart. Uh, Cops have been called in, of course, uh, to an Olive Garden when he pulled the fire alarm. He was arrested on the campus of um, the University of Colorado. He's been um, arrested because he's failed to make court hearings. You know, it's, it's common. How this time differs is that it's not some local sheriff department hauling him into jail. No, no. This time it's the feds. 
Yes, I mean, this is some serious shit. This is like Chris Chan level seriousness. He might be going away for a while. Larson was charged with seven federal counts uh, consisting of six counts of, quote, use uh, or threatened use of explosives and one count of interstate communication of threats. Take a look at the chapter artwork if you want to see Daniel's mugshot. Apparently on April 30th, so uh, about a week ago, Daniel was booked at Clear Creek County Jail in Georgetown, Colorado, after being arrested by federal agents. (laughs) Uh, Redditors in the Daniel Larson subreddit unearthed his custody record. This is according to Know Your Meme. So I've got some screenshots here. It looks like each of these seven counts carry with it uh, 10 years in prison. I'm guessing that's a maximum. It says here 10 years in prison, a $250,000 fine or both. Either way, it's clear to see that Daniel Larson is properly fucked at this point. The only thing that could possibly save him because... There's a lot of like video evidence where he makes threats. So it seems like it would be very easy to convict this guy. The only thing working in his favor is that he's obviously mentally ill. Like there's something wrong with him upstairs. Uh, I found another news story about this. Uh, it says here that Daniel Larson was arrested and charged with six counts of uh, use or threatened use of explosive materials. Uh, if found guilty, Larson will be facing 65 years in prison. Uh, or a total of $1.5 million in fines. According to the filing throughout 2023, Larson willfully made threats over the phone that attempts were being made to damage or destroy several buildings with explosives. These buildings include a Colorado courthouse, a nonprofit center, the White House, a Colorado state government building, a college campus, and the FBI headquarters. Really going for that money shot there. The document also states that Larson uh, threatened an FBI agent. A pretty fuck-witted thing to do. A week ago, Daniel did post one final message on TikTok. I don't think it was a video. It was just a message saying, due to my popularity, (laughs) it's all because he's popular. (laughs) He's a celebrity going to jail. Due to my popularity and safety concerns, I will be going into the mountains until further notice. He's trying to flee. We'll see how that works out. Uh, For Daniel Larson, there's just a little update for... Actually, a big update. A federal size update. All right, uh, let's move on. While we're checking in with some old favorites, uh, Frankie McDonald is back with a revelation. Frankie McDonald, of course, is Canada's premier weatherman. That is, if you like your weather screamed at you. This is Frankie McDonald! There's a thunderstorm coming! Which, in all honesty, when there is severe weather, I don't mind being yelled at. It puts people on high alert, you know, lets them know danger is near. If a tornado is about to lift up my house and destroy it, I'd like a heads up. And if the meteorologist is just like, you know, yeah, a tornado is probably going to just come through your neighborhood later today. Be prepared. I might miss that, you know, because there's not a lot of urgency in his voice. That's what Frankie McDonald brings to the table. Just to give you a little sample of his weather forecasting, here is one of Frankie's most recent videos. This is Frankie McDonald. My own TV station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Heavy rain is headed towards Santiago, Chile on Tuesday. May 7, 2024, it's going to bring up to 20 to 30 millimeters of rain in Santiago, Chile, and surrounding areas. It's going to bring a lot of rain. Streets, roads, highways, and freeways will be wet in Santiago, Chile, and surrounding areas. It's going- a little late to do anything about it now, this being May 8th, but, you know, this is the last weather forecast that uh, Frankie posted. He posted it back on the 5th, so he gave the fine people of uh, Santiago fair warning. The real reason why I'm bringing Frankie up today is uh, because of a different type of video he recently posted. You know, I don't know a lot about uh, Frankie's sexual desires. I know he doesn't like homosexuals. He's not down with the LGBTQ community, but that's okay. Not many people are these days. Our brand has been tarnished a bit. It's just something I've accepted. Anyway, uh, in a recent video, uh, Frankie appears to be a little horny. Hey, everybody, it's Frank Dowler. First of all, there's a um, a difference in the way he speaks. You know, hey, hey, everybody, it's Frankie. Hey, everybody, it's Frank Dowler. I really, 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 really love women. All right, let's get this guy a girlfriend already. What type of lady are you looking for? I really love women, including BBW women. I love to be in a deep... I'm sorry. 
What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Frankie talks very fast. Did I hear what I think I heard? Hey, everybody. It's Frankie Dow. I really, 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 really love women, including BBW women. Yes, I think he did say that. He loves BBWs. All right. Frankie likes them large and in charge. Big guts and fat cunts. Right on, my man. I love to be in a deep water on a sandy beach. I like to, I love to roll around the sand and roll around the sand and things like this. I really, really, really love women going BBW women. And, and I wish I was in the water and rolling around the sand. It's rolling around with big, fat, roly-poly women. And swimming in water and rolling around the sand at the same time. And rolling around the sand for find out. I think he mentioned his love for sand more than his love for women, but okay, he's looking for a lady, a big, big woman. Unfortunately, his two favorite things, big fat women and sand, may pose a a unique problem. You know, the bigger the lady, the more uh, fat folds you're going to deal with, the more crevices that uh, sand can find its way into. It's going to be difficult to find like a really, really obese woman who enjoys rolling around in the sand. But maybe that's why he's posting this video. Again, trying to cast a wide net. I wonder where he got that idea. Hello, my future girlfriend. That's right. You get on your hands and knees, Frankie McDonald, and you thank Michael Blount for everything he's done for you and the Internet as a whole. All right, let's move on. This next video is, uh, quite frankly, something I fear. I'm pretty sure I still have a Planet Fitness membership because the only way you can cancel is, like, by going in to the gym to cancel like you can't do it online you can't do it over the phone they make you come in i'm pretty sure there's a lawsuit currently pending saying you know planet fitness they have the ability to cancel your membership in other ways they just refuse to do it like their whole business model is uh hoping people forget about the memberships or you know they people sign up because it's you know their new year's resolution or something and then they're even they're too lazy to even go to can- they won't even go to the gym to cancel their membership. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at. Also, you know, it is kind of funny. You can sign up for the gym online, but you can't cancel online. Anyway, I just know, you know, you go to the gym to cancel and they, uh, you know, they start to judge you, even though Planet Fitness is a no judgment zone. There's a sign right on the wall that says that. But they'll be like, you don't want to cancel the gym. Look at you. You of all people need this membership. That's what happened to one woman here. <laughs> Where's that young man that just called me out of my name? Where is he? There he is. Uh-oh. She found the employee that wronged her. Call me the name you just called me a while ago as a customer. Did you just call me a fat ass and call my birth date out and everything? You old and fat, bitch. You want to die early? I didn't think so. You want to keep your gym membership and maybe add a few years onto your life. Will you just say this to your corporate managers when I send it and while I'm posting on Facebook Live? Did you just call me a 56-year-old fat ass? <laughs> Tyler? Did you? He's shaking his head no. Now what are you going to do? You don't have any proof. Say it again. Did you just call me a 56-year-old fat ass? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Say it now. Yeah, say it now while I got this camera in your face. Like, he's not dumb. (laughs) He's not going to say it now. I tried to cancel my membership here. I love the other employees are acting like they're on their phones, you know. Where's that uh, assistant manager at? We can, three or four of us can play this. Did you just stand here witness him calling me a 56-year-old fat ass because I tried to cancel my membership? I mean, I heard a lot of commotion, but I didn't hear it. I, didn't, I don't know. I didn't hear anything. Why is there commotion if this woman just wants to cancel her membership? It sounds like there's commotion because you wouldn't cancel her membership. I, all I heard was you came back yelling, fat ass, mama, daddy. And but you didn't hear him, what he said to me. And you're the assistant manager. And you were here when I came in to cancel my membership. Yeah, when, that, when I was But you didn't hear any of that. No commotion. No. But you heard what I said, but you didn't hear what he said. Well, you were probably being loud. <laughs> I can tell. I can sense that your voice carries. I heard commotion. Okay. All right. Of course. We'll take care of it. Here's the thing. Planet Fitness memberships are, what, $9 a month? There's no need to get that worked up over it. I can understand you being upset. You know, you, you want to cancel something. They make you jump through fucking hoops to, to cancel a membership. You go in to cancel, and then they don't want to do it for you, or they make fun of you for being fat. 
But still, let's keep this all in perspective here. Go to your bank and dispute the charges. That money will be back in your account, you know, in a day or two, and you can use that to buy yourself an Arby's value meal. You old fat whore. (laughs) All right, uh, (laughs) real quick before we get into the news, I've got another irate customer here. This woman went to a shop owned by a Mexican. This lady was appalled to see that uh, this guy was selling Confederate flags. Actually, it looks like it was a Mexican carpet store. Okay, very specific. And uh, the guy was selling carpeting or rugs or something that had uh, the Confederate flag on it. Mead, I hope you're listening. This sounds like it would go great in your house. Now, look, whether this guy is Mexican or white, it, it doesn't matter. You go into a store and they're selling Confederate flags. Why even make a big deal about it? You can voice your opinion, I guess, and say, you know what? I don't think I'm going to shop here. I don't I don't like the whole Confederate flag thing. Or you can just, you know, shut up about it. Take your business elsewhere if it's uh, that big of a deal. This woman, though, takes a different approach. He says he's Mexican, so it doesn't She immediately, you know, gets on social media. He says he's Mexican, so it doesn't matter that they have Confederate flags and I'm a bitch. Um, yeah, it's called Extreme. It's this place. Extreme Displace? It's not a great name for a rug store. As soon as I asked about it, they started calling me a bitch and telling me to fuck off. It might also be how you broached the subject. Excuse me, why are you selling Confederate flags? I could see her saying something like that in a very, you know, accusatory way. (sighs) Okay, well, you know, please spread this. Uh... So she's in the parking lot, I guess, getting ready to leave. I don't know what else to say right now. I'm pretty shook up. I'm going to get the kids out of here. Anyway, 146th and Stark, um, extreme deals, uh, extreme have deals. Confederate flags hanging. And according to them, it's my problem because I'm a bitch. Okay. So I can get out of here. Okay. So ne- there's a cut in the video. And the next thing you know, she's screaming at an employee who is uh, outside. She's saying that he is preventing her from leaving. He's probably 30 to 50 feet away from her car. (laughs) Like, he's nowhere near her. I can't even make out his facial features. I can barely, I don't even know what type of shirt he's wearing, right? I think it's a short sleeve reddish shirt. But I mean, that, that should tell you that, you know, he's far away. Let me leave so I can get my kids out of here. Please leave me alone. Let me be. <laughs> He's explaining to her. If you want to leave, go, get in your car and turn it on. No one's talking to you. Get, do not get any closer to me. Do not get any closer to me. He is not approaching her in any way, shape, or form. He has not moved from his position a mile and a half away. Do not. Okay. Oh, he did take one step forward to antagonize her. <laughs> but again, he's super far away. Seriously, please, please do call the police. This is ridiculous. Get away from me. It's like, just get in the car and go. No one is stopping you from doing this. You just want to prolong this interaction for, I don't know, internet points or something? Or just your own sense of superiority? You're walking towards me. Two men who are calling me a dumb bitch are approaching me in the, in the parking lot. And I have two small children. Get away from me so I can load my kids up and leave. You can even tell by his voice that he's far away. I took a screen cap. Take a look at the chapter artwork if you've got a podcast app that uh, plays nice with those things. And, I mean, you can see how far away he is. He's in. He's not a danger and he's not a threat. Stop running your mouth. You can load your kids up. I'm at work. You're at work. Yeah, I'm at work right here. So what are you doing? I'm trying to leave. Why? Why are you recording me? Do not get close. Because you're approaching me in a, gro- in a parking lot and I have two small children. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Walk away from me. Do not. I cannot leave when you keep approaching me from back. I was shopping in my car seat and you're coming up from behind me. This is horrifying. Still at this point, he has not moved a muscle. Leave me alone. Go away. Please tell him to leave me alone. He just assaulted me in the store, called me a fucking bitch. And now he's following with my two kids. Get away from me. Oh. Oh my God. Well, now, now one, someone is approaching, but it's a woman. A woman is approaching. Yes, I am crying. Oh, my God. Do you need a picket sign? Okay. Please shut him to call. I did. I did. You're okay. No, I'm not. He just attacked me at the store. I need to know. (laughs) Attacked. Yes, I am crying. Oh, apparently the woman who's approaching is her friend, because she knows it calls her Nicole. Please shut him to call. I did. 
did. I did. You're okay. No, I'm not. He just attacked no. me at the store and he's still following me. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, by the way, this is like broad daylight, middle of the day. It's not like nighttime. I'm trying to think of any reason why this woman should be afraid. Even if this guy was far away, you know, if it was nighttime, very dark, I don't know. That's kind of scary for ladies. Although I do feel like if she really felt like she was in danger, she would just get in her car already. No one is blocking you. Please make sure they don't get you closer. They won't. They won't. I told them that they need to leave. They have Confederate flags hanging in their store, and I brought it up to them, and they started pulling me around and calling me a bitch. I don't think they pulled her around, because up until 30 seconds ago, she made no mention of them putting hands on her. They just called her a bitch. And Satan! Okay, all right. She She just huffs and puffs for a few more seconds, and that's when the video ends. She is literally a victim looking to be assaulted. I mean, that's I mean, she that's her dream. That's her fantasy here. I mean, she's made this whole thing up in her head. She was never being held against her will, and she could have left at any time. She just hung around to scream and talk about how scared she was. The guy who was supposedly assaulting her was even trying to help her. He's like, put the key in the ignition. Get in your car and drive away, lady. I could understand why she didn't uh, take his advice because maybe she couldn't hear him because he was so far away. A real danger. All right, well, there you go. Daffy Broad just trying to stir up some shit in a carpet store. Uh, And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist of the fucked up news right now. If you enjoy Distorted View Daily, become a member of the Sideshow and get even more stupidity. How about Monday through Friday? How does that sound? Kind of sounds like too much Distorted View Daily, if you ask me. Well, if you're absolutely fucking insane, sign up for the Sideshow. Uh, DV's member site, where every week I do brand new exclusive shows just for paying members. Most weeks we do, uh, what, three Sideshow exclusive episodes. This week uh, we switched it up a bit. Yesterday was a Sideshow exclusive episode, and I'll be doing another one tomorrow. Sign up right now so you don't miss a thing. Memberships are very inexpensive, only $6.99 a month. Even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. Lots of options for you. Go to SuperFreakSideshow.com. All major credit cards and PayPal accepted. If you sign up through the website, you get a password-protected RSS feed that works with most podcasting apps like Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Podcast Addict, Pocket Cast, all the big ones. Now, if you happen to use Apple Podcasts or Spotify, there's uh, an easier way to gain Sideshow access, and that is uh, right inside of those apps. Just go to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, search for Distorted View, and you'll see a link or button to uh, gain Sideshow access. Just a few taps, bing, bang, boom, you're in. The Sideshow episodes will appear right alongside the free episodes in your feed. Again, sign up right now so you don't miss a thing, especially tomorrow's Sideshow exclusive episode. Uh, Go to superfreaksideshow.com for more information. There is one final way to help support DV. Of course, we've got a Patreon account, patreon.com slash distorted view. I'm going to tell you right now, pledge $5. You do that, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. And I'm currently getting ready to send free stickers to anyone who pledges at least $5. More information will be coming over there at patreon.com slash distorted view, but make sure you pledge now. So I have your name and, and you're listed as a donor, or whatever, pledge or whatever you're called patron. So you can participate in that free sticker giveaway. There are other tiers. Of course, if you pledge at least $20, occasionally I send out uh, like real DV merchandise type stuff. We've sent out beach towels, beer mugs, t-shirts, hats. We've sent out uh, all sorts of stuff over the years. The last thing I sent out was uh, this uh, Distorted View pillow plushy thing in the shape of the, the DV logo, which a lot of people liked. Later this summer, I'll be doing another drop. So, you know, get in on that as well. So you pledge $20, we'll cover all your bases. You'll get access to the phone number. You'll get the stickers if you want them. And then any big stuff I have planned coming up. So just, you know, that's enough plugging, I guess. Patreon.com slash Distorted View. Three very quick stories now. First up. On Thursday, at an altitude of about 38,000 feet, a severe vomiting outbreak affected 70 passengers aboard Condor Flight DE-2315, a flight that was headed to Frankfurt. 
The aircraft carrying 290 passengers landed in Frankfurt at approximately 5.33 p.m., where a substantial emergency response awaited. Prior to landing, the crew had notified ground officials of the critical situation on board. It was determined that about a quarter of the passengers exhibited symptoms such as nausea and vomiting. 70 people vomiting. Okay, some of them may have just experienced nausea. But if even a quarter of them were puking, that's a lot of puke for one plane. Thankfully, the crew remained unaffected. That's a little odd, don't you think? I think an employee had it in for all the passengers. A spokesman for the German airline relayed the details to build a national tabloid. They emphasized the fact that the crew was prepared for these emergencies. The spokesperson stated the pilot and crew are well trained for such uh, situations. After evaluating the situation, the decision was made to continue the flight. While the exact cause of the vomit outbreak remains unconfirmed, the airline mentioned that the onboard meals were prepared in Mauritius, which is, um, I guess, an island in Africa. I didn't even know Africa had islands. Well, apparently they also have a lot of rotten food. It is likely that it, it was the food on board because, you know, there was a large portion of people vomiting. Although some may have started vomiting because they saw and or smelled other people vomiting. You know, the puking chain reaction is a thing. It's uh, an upchuck domino effect. You don't want to be involved in one of those things. According to the Daily Mail, while individuals falling ill while flying is not uncommon, it is unusual that so many people at once got sick. The most extreme case, according to the Daily Mail, happened in 1975. There was an outbreak uh, of food poisoning. It was a uh, Japan Airlines flight, so there was probably seafood involved. Japanese people love squid and gross sea creatures, and that shit goes bad quick. On that particular flight, 197 people fell sick out of the 344 people on board. It wasn't just uh, vomiting either. There was nausea, sure, vomiting, but also diarrhea and stomach cramping. Sounds like it would be a horrific, disgusting, smelly sight, sure. But I still think um, no airline vomiting disaster comes close to the shit going down on those, like, carnival cruise lines. <laughs> when those viruses hit, thousands of people, right, get ill. I think there have been cases where, like, the ships weren't even allowed to dock. They had to just stay out in the sea <laughs> for a while. No one wanted those people on shore. Come on. When you stop shitting magma, then we'll consider letting you um, on our land. Anyway, in this latest case, even though it's thought to have been the food, an investigation was promptly initiated to pinpoint the cause and to implement preventative measures for the future. Second story we have for you today. This one just happens to come from our most fucked up state. Say it with me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Praise oh, Jesus. Praise Give me a hallelujah. Dad, I hold my flower now. This almost fucked up state. Shepherd, hear me now. Roll it up. This almost fucked up state. Praise be to the Lord. Yes, this one comes from North Miami, Florida, where an employee at a cell phone store fell victim to a scam orchestrated by a deceitful customer. The incident unfolded at the Talk 4, the number 4, Talk 4 Less Wireless Store. Sounds reputable. Who goes to these cell phone stores that are not, like, branded T-Mobile or Metro or Verizon or whatever? I don't even know what kind of plans these cell phone what these stores sell. When you go into a talk for less, what are, you, what are you buying exactly? I mean, I don't want to act all uppity here. I ain't some bougie bitch, but, you know, like, I'm not above, uh, you know, finding a good deal. Right now, I don't even have a, a cell phone in my own name, I don't think. I mean, technically, it's un, in my name, but I'm, like, on a plan with other people. I think I pay, like, 10 or $30 a month or something. Like, it's very cheap. I'm not trying to look down on people here, but seriously, who the fuck shops at Talk for Less? Any store that replaces F-O-R with the number four? I don't know. It seems a little too low rent. Uh, the employee who preferred to remain anonymous <laughs> something embarrassing happened to him uh, recounted that he was duped by a woman who entered the store and asked to use his phone. Can I see your phone for a second? 
Sure. Like, was she, like, pretending to hit on him? Like, I just want to put my phone number in so you can call me later. Actually, no, that's not what happened. This woman uh, went into the store and was like, look, I don't have a phone. You can try to sell me one later. But for right now, can I borrow your phone and call my mom? I need her to pick me up. And this guy, just trying to be a good dude, was like, here, yeah, sure. Captured by surveillance cameras, the woman approached the counter, presented her request as an innocent plea, and briefly used the employee's phone. Shortly after the woman left, thanking him as she departed, (laughs) the employee checked his phone and discovered a $1,100 transaction had been made from his cash app to an unknown recipient. Don't they password protect those fucking apps? Like, don't you have to use, like, face ID or touch ID or put in a four-fucking-number pin? Stupid idiot. It became clear that while the woman had his phone, she accessed his financial apps and transferred the money to herself. Dexter Lubin, nice, the owner of Talk 4 Less, expressed his outrage over the incident. Security footage showed him vocally expressing his disbelief and frustration at the deceit that took place in his establishment. Lubin mentioned that during her visit, the woman inquired if the store accepted cash app payments, (laughs) hinting at her familiarity with the app in question. The crime prompted a visit from Miami-Dade police uh, police officers. First of all, yes, this was dumb on his part to hand over his phone to a complete stranger, but she sent herself money through uh, cash app. So her details are kind of on his phone, right? Like if you go into the, I don't really use Cash App, so I don't know all of the particulars, but there's got to be some way on identifying this bitch, right? A police report was filed in the Miami-Dade Police Department stated that they're investigating this type of theft, which has become increasingly common. The event echoes a similar incident uh, where individuals in Miami Beach were swindled out of money through mobile transfer apps like Venmo and Cash App after lending their phones to strangers. You know, I make fun of these people, but uh, I'm recalling um, a month or two ago, I went with Lord Douche to to a uh, Chinese buffet. And when I got the, and of course I was using a coupon because I'm a cheap bitch. By the way, buffets have become very, very expensive. You used to pay like $7.99 for an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. Now it's like 20 some dollars per person. It's outrageous. So yeah, I use coupons. Anyway, I was using a coupon, but they didn't uh, recognize it right on on my uh, bill, on the bill they gave me. So I uh, I told her, actually, I have a coupon. It's on my phone. And she's like, oh, let me, you know, I'm not going to do the Asian accent here. <laughs> I don't need to be canceled today. But she's like, you know, give me phone. Give me phone. And then she'll, she's like, I'll go back and I'll, uh, you know, scan it or whatever. So she took my phone. It was unlocked and everything. I'm just as dumb as the guy in the cell phone store. Of course, I was fully... The second I gave her the phone and she walked away, I was aware of how dumb I was. So I was like eyeballing her the whole time. I stood up to see where she was walking and what she was doing on my phone. And then as soon as I got it back, I like saw what apps were open, what ones have been used, logged into my, uh, you know, bank and everything was fine. You know, I'm not saying the Chinese are deceitful people looking to steal your money, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not very trusting. I'm just dumb. Handing people my phone, just like this guy. All right. Anyway, uh, Lubin reflected on the harsh realities of such scams, emphasizing the unexpected nature of such deceit and the unpleasant feeling of being exploited when attempting to help someone in need. Never pays to help people. Ding. All right. Final story we have for you to jump. I mean, that last news story, you know, came from Florida. But this final news story, this one is a real Florida DV news story. Yes, it comes from our most fucked up state again. Florida, our most fucked up state. Well, it does, in fact, involve a Florida man who happens to be a quadriplegic. And he's in trouble with the law. In Miami-Dade County, Florida, a unique case came before a judge involving Bryant Asmatha or something. A 32-year-old quadriplegic man charged with two counts of battery. Now, I know most of you don't have medical degrees, but it's pretty common knowledge that uh, quad means four. And if you are a quadriplegic, it means all of your limbs are gone. So how the hell did this guy batter anyone? Let's read on. Yes, this 32-year-old quadriplegic man was charged with two counts of battery on a law enforcement officer. Quote, I've truly never seen a case like this, remarked the judge overseeing the case. 
Amasta, who is also a YouTube personality. What? He's got a channel? Uh, and a recording artist named L Valiant. Valiant T? I got it's Valiant. It's Valiant, but it's Valiant hyphen T. I don't know. Okay. Dumb name. Still, that's enough to go on. I'm sure I'll be able to find him on YouTube. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, he's accused of hitting an officer with his motorized wheelchair. Okay, that's how he did it. So now I have even more questions. I mean, typically a quadriplegic, the only thing you can really use at that point is your mouth. So he's using his mouth to steer and operate the wheelchair. If you're ramming someone with it, though, is it really safe or a good idea to have that thing in your mouth controlling the, the wheelchair as you're ramming into something hard? You could fuck up your mouth. And if you're a quadriplegic, your mouth is even more important than normal. It's like one of the last pieces of your body that uh, work. Anyway, this all went down during a domestic dispute at his home in southwest Miami-Dade. The incident occurred. This guy is a homeowner. <laughs> this quadriplegic. <laughs> How's your life going, freaks? As you rent a shitty one-bedroom apartment. Probably don't even have a car for yourself. This guy's rolling around on a fancy motorized wheelchair, living the good life. All right. Uh, the incident occurred when police responded to a conflict between Amasta and his mother on Wednesday. Okay, he lives with his mom. According to the police report, the confrontation escalated after his mom was arrested. Amasta said... Uh, the officer, she bumped my wheelchair because I was standing in the driveway and the driveway is thin. So it wasn't battery. Police officers just uh, clumsy. Uh, a local news reporter, local News 10 reporter Janine Stanwood, addressed allegations mentioned in the report that Amasta spit at an officer. Amasta clarified, I suffer from acid reflux, so I spit normally and I spat in a totally different direction. Good defense. All right. During an interview with the local news, medical personnel arrived to transport Amasta to the hospital. He claimed, though, that he was injured during his arrest. He was also injured during uh, the process of being transferred from his wheelchair to the police vehicle. Boy, he's pretty fragile rattling around there like uh, fine China or something. They manhandled me, he said, noting the difficulty of being handcuffed with his hands behind his back due to, you know, not having hands. Well, I mean, I guess his hands are still there, technically. I think at the beginning of the story, I was thinking of um, a uh, amputee, <laughs> like a quad amputee. Quadriplegic has hands, they just they don't work. No worky legs, no working feet, no working arms or hands. So it's, it's as good as being gone, really. Amasta's attorney emphasized his client's limited mobility, and the judge advised him to avoid contact with the officer involved if they were to meet again. The Miami-Dade Police Department reported that this was the first time they had heard the allegations regarding a rough arrest or damage to the wheelchair. They have not received any formal complaints about the incident. Uh, oh boy, I found his YouTube channel. <laughs> Take a look at the chapter artwork. This is the young man we're dealing with here. Oh, he looks like a sweet little boy. I'm sure this all is a misunderstanding. Here's one of his songs. Yes, he's a singer. Quiero caminar contigo de la mano. Aww. Quiero hacerte entender que esta you know, I was assuming that he was going to be a rapper, if anything. But no, he's actually singing. So, you know. Give him credit for that. Not that rap isn't singing, but, you know, you've heard some rap. I wonder if Lord Douche would like this music. I think this is like Cuban or something. This is another song. I mean, this is the type of shit you, you find in Mexican restaurants, right? They're like blaring at taco stands. All right, well, listen. He, he has a good spirit about him, right? He's, he seems to be like upbeat music. Anyway, take a look at the chapter artwork. That's the guy accused of um, assaulting an officer with his wheelchair. Uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Wednesday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. Love to hear from you, freaks, and there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash distortedviewshow. Uh, let's do a couple uh, patron calls here and then maybe a few uh, regular voicemails and uh, call it a day. 
My Hero Academia is not a show just for, uh, God, I don't remember what the hell you said it was for. It doesn't matter. You like it because it is good. Thank you. Okay. It's not just for, like, 13-year-old girls who are, like, lusting after some of the students. Because it's good. Because it's real good. I like it. Uh... I'm having a real problem with that show now. You know, I was blowing through episodes. I got to, like, episode 90 (laughs) on Netflix, and then it stopped. They don't have any more. Season 5 and 6 are not on Netflix. They're only on Hulu, and I've got the shitty Hulu plan that um, uh, plays ads all the fucking time. So now I can't watch these shows quickly because I'm stopped every five minutes with flow from progressive yapping my ear off about insurance it's super annoying i think i'm just gonna go ahead and pay (laughs) you know for a month or two of regular hulu with no ads because uh it's driving me bonkers the thing is that everybody keeps recommending or not recommending but never actually fully explains it it's like sailor moon because it's about magical girls girls that turn into magical versions of whatever i don't remember the fucking Yes. Definition of exactly, but they're normal girls, and then they have magic powers. Okay. But yeah. it's really dark and kind of twisted, but also super girly. You know, for parts. Yeah, right up my alley. You know, I love those girly cartoons. Like, I don't, I don't think I'm really into the magical girl genre of anime. And you know, Lord Douche, despite loving Sailor Moon, um, he's not a big fan of that genre genre either. He loves Sailor Moon, but that's that's kind of where it ends. Sailor Moon is just special to him. Hey, Boo, Bagacon here, longtime caller, first time listener. Uh, hey, uh, I do want to apologize for uh, taking some shots at My Hero Academia. <laughs> it is entirely because I'm a big, fat, elitist hipster. Uh, I really like the Chainsaw Man manga, and I have not even bothered to finish the anime, even though I liked it. My favorite anime is called Tommy Galaxy, and there's like why is it whenever listeners are trying to say the name of an anime title, their phone craps out, or they stop talking into the stupid receiver? And, you know, the thing about anime is they all have ridiculous names that make absolutely no sense, and you would never guess them in a million years. Right? These, they have names like, you know, Sofa Green Mountain Kill Shop. Like, what, what was that again? Sofa Green Mountain Kill Shop. Or Tender Factory Neo Go 2. You don't make any sense, right? Like, what? Chicken, chicken, blood kisses. And, and you're like, well, what is chicken, chicken, blood kisses about? It's about a spaceship n- named Chicken Blood. And, it, you know, the ship is powered by love and kisses. And uh, the people who are on the ship are trying to fight the devil in hell. And you're like, why is hell in sp- What does that have to do with a spaceship? And they're like, well, hell is actually in space. All of hell is contained in a space cruiser shaped like a tree and all of the demons uh, ride around in Gundams or something. You know, like, it's just bizarre. It's just in- absolutely insane. You could never guess what these shows are about based on their titles. Uh, so I have no idea what this guy just said. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe you should j- just write an email to me with further anime recommendations. Tommy Galaxy and there's like, Wait, hold on. Like this. My favorite anime is called Tommy Galaxy. Something Galaxy. And there's okay. like... Basically, just a guy in Groundhog Day, but you know, it's crazy. Uh, but I do want to say uh, <laughs> what? the best episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine is uh, the one where one of the space Jews masturbates so much he has to go to the hospital, and the experience that makes him unionize his workplace. I okay. I don't. I don't remember. I don't watch a lot of Deep Space Nine. This is really more Lord Douche's territory. I'll ask him about the space Jews and the unionization of uh, workplaces. But I'm, I'm hoping he's as perplexed as I am. It's legit, but that is kind of a glib plot summary. Uh, if you ask Lord Douche about it, I bet he'll know which one. Uh, I, that is actually legit one of my favorite episodes of Deep Space Nine. Aside from, you know, the big ones, such as uh, In the Pale Moonlight, that's an easy one. Uh, the baseball episode in the final season okay. is right. an easy one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you want to talk television with Lord Douche, I'll give you his phone number. Hey, boo. Happy New Year, fucker. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Is that the uh, Spiral Ham Fucker? Or a Spiral Ham Fucker um, clone? <laughs> May I start? Wait a second. This can't be right. I guess it could be. I guess we're, we're finally into the 2024 calls on the regular voicemail line. May I start? Yeah, yeah hey, 
Uh, I uh, want to talk to you guys about what you think about my girlfriend. Okay. Uh, she's right here. Um, hey, bro. Like, yeah, she she likes to just grab on my penis like at like seven in the morning. Okay, nothing wrong with that. So far, so good. And my penis is not very big yeah. at seven in the morning. What are you talking about? That's like morning wood time. That should be like your penis at its best. And then she just grabs on it. What do you think? All right. I say just be happy you have someone to grab onto your cock. Stop being a little bitch about it. Let her tug it if she wants to tug it. Yeah. I Women's think rights. I think maybe it's cool. This is what they fought for, right? This is what suffrage is all about. Well, he's got a small penis. And it's like no big deal, and I'm like, don't worry. All right, hold on here. I want to hear. I want to hear her comments about his cock size. Yeah, I think maybe it's cool that he's got a small penis, and it's like no big deal. And I'm like, don't worry about it. Your penis is so small, well, but it's cool because we're we're in love. You're not supposed to acknowledge that he has a small penis. What you're supposed to say, even if he has a small penis, you'd be like, your penis is the perfect size for me. I love it. <laughs> That's all you have to say. Yeah, we are. But, you know, she does appear to be cool with it, so I think you got a good one. We're in love, but it's just, it's kind of rough when you pull on it. Well. And I know that it gets bigger when you pull on it, but it's it's rough. Well, tell her to be a little less rough. Or tell her to, before she tugs, apply lotion. How about that? Oils or something? Go to adamandeve.com. They have all sorts of creams. And lotions and oils and stuff that'll make uh, your dick feel real good. And maybe even plump it up. Use promo code FREAK and get 50% off. Plus a bunch of free gifts. Aha! I managed to fit in a little commercial. I'm a happy camper. All right, now we can officially end the show. Uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the program. I want you guys to email me. Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 206-660. Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. Bomb you! Bomb you! Bomb you! Kill you! Kill you! Spread the distortion. STD, tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. I will see you back tomorrow, if and only if you're Sideshow members. Otherwise, I'll be back on Friday to end the week. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Distorted View Daily. <laughs> okay. Ah! This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.